Let's pretend we can see things. <laughs> So yeah. here's the oral pharynx. Not ready to here's the oral pharynx. Here we can see our efferent branchials, which is coming off the dorsal aorta. And of course, there'll be a blood vessel running at a different angle than the efferent branchials are, and that's the esophageal. We see these two vessels here looking like one. This vessel here is the hyoidean epibranchial, and then Continuing on towards the midline will be the internal carotid. Many times we'll see a branch coming off right about here. There it is. Coming off the hyoidean epibranchial towards the spiracle, and that will be the spiracular. And this vessel doesn't show very well, but when you see it, the radex aorta will come up like so. It looks like an antenna, like a cockroach antenna. You can see a little bit of it right here. Okay, a radex is really easy to identify. Once you see it once, you won't forget it. Now uh, here we have the heart, and we pull up on the heart, and we can see that it was never cleaned out of the blood, but this yellow thing underneath here, looking like a cheap t-shirt, is the sinus venosus. And then we can see the one atrium, although it looks like two, it would be easy to make a mistake on the exam. It looks like you have two atria like in your mud puppy, but remember the shark atrium is shaped like a U and the ventricle sits right in the notch of the U, so it's easy to make that mistake. But it is all one atrium, one ventricle, and this vessel coming up is the conus arteriosus. Any blood vessels you see associated with this, like the one here that's not injected, are coronary blood vessels. Here's the shark's liver. We've got the left lateral and right lateral lobes, and then of course we also have a median lobe. This thing in here is the gallbladder. This happens to be a little boy. What? And this is his testicle. So if you're ever attacked by a shark while surfing, don't kick it between the pelvic fins. It won't do any good. Here we can see the mesonephric kidney. And one thing you'll notice on these guys, the squiggly appearance of the mesonephric duct running through there. You won't see that with the female. And then here, we have it expanding out. Those are the seminal vesicles. Here, of course, is the clasper. And it looks like Brian was being diligent in trying to expose this little swollen structure at the base here, which is going to be the sperm sac, which actually we have a bit of it here. That's just part of the bone, the cartilage. There's a sperm sac there. All right. Here we have the rectal gland, which is for what purpose? Very good. Hmm? Here, of He's course, rolling. is the stomach. We can see the rugae in there nicely. Here we see the spleen. Um, this is a little bit of a mess. This isn't Brian's fault, surprisingly. This is due to a poor injection. But we have a little bit of our ventral lobe of the pancreas. And over here, in looking like it's stuck in a Smurf suicide pack <laughs> is going to be the dorsal lobe of the pancreas. Of course, the junction here between the stomach and the intestine will be the pyloric region stomach pyloric junction. Here's the valvar intestine leading into it. We sometimes refer to this as duodenum and then ileum. There's our valvar intestine and looks like Brian started to put a little window in here but got tired. <laughs> so you can see the valve. Come down here to the post valve our intestine, also called the rectum, and then of course the cloaca. All right, looking at blood vessels. Now again, this is another one of those animals where things were not injected properly. Blue is supposed to be hepatic portal. Yellow is supposed to be, I'm sorry, blue is supposed to be systemic, and yellow is supposed to be hepatic portal. They did it backwards. And one way you can tell that is this is definitely a systemic vein. That's the lateral abdominal vein. Real easy one to identify. Up here behind the gonads will be a sort of deflated looking balloon-like thing, which will be the posterior cardinal sinuses. And you'll see an artery right along it, which is the subclavian. Coming down here, pardon me? Genital sinus. We're not going to be able to differentiate them on these animals. All right, here we have our dorsal aorta in red, 
you'll see a little yellow vessel on either side of it. Those are the posterior cardinal veins. As you recall from the lecture on circulation, out here, external to the kidney, will be our renal portal veins. So the renal portal veins are bringing blood, which is going across the kidneys for processing, and then picked up by the posterior cardinals, which will then drain into the posterior cardinal sinuses, and then sinus venosis, atria, ventricle, etc. Okay, coming down here to these blood vessels of the digestive organs. They're a little confusing at first, but they're not that bad if you just take your time with them. Here we have the celiac trunk. Celiac trunk is going to give rise to a short vessel here called the gastrohepatic, which immediately branches to give us the hepatic traveling up to the liver, and the gastric, oddly enough, heading over to the stomach. Now, the hepatic will be traveling with our hepatic portal vein, which again should be yellow, not blue, but there it is. Another branch coming off of the celiac will be the pancreaticomesenteric artery. Pancreaticomesenteric artery is going to be running with the pancreaticomesenteric vein. Pancreaticomesenteric vein and lenomesenteric vein are going to be a little hard to tell apart for students first starting out. They're near each other, their names are similar, but one thing you'll notice is, except in an animal like this where it's not injected properly, you don't see any pink along the lenomesenteric, because the lenomesenteric vein does not have a corresponding artery. So if you see an artery and a vein together, you know it's pancreaticomesenteric. If you see a vein by itself, lenomesenteric, and also the vein will be associated with the dorsal lobe of the pancreas. Now the lenomesenteric comes all the way down and forks right here, giving us one vein going into the spleen called the posterior splenic, another vein going to the intestine called the posterior intestinal. So both posteriors come off of the lenomesenteric, which may help a little bit with remembering it. Posterior splenic, I'm sorry, posterior intestinal vein will help to give rise to the annular veins as well. Pancreaticomesenteric has more branches coming off of it. Let's see if we can see some of these, because Brian saved a lot of the peritoneal folds on purpose, I'm sure. But here we can see going into the spleen, here is the anterior splenic artery and vein. We can also, uh, there's just too much latex in here to see things well. Well, we can see this branch here, which is the anterior intestinal artery and vein, which will help to give rise to the annulars as well. We're, in some animals, you'll be able to see a branch like, let's see, this is just a bit of a mess because of the latex blowout, unfortunately. But you'll have a branch going into the intestine, that's the intraintestinal. One sitting right on the duodenum, which will be the duodenal, and another one running right on the pyloric region of the stomach, which will be the pyloric artery and vein. Okay, continuing on down, here we have the posterior intestinal vein artery, which is also going to give rise to annulars. And this little artery used to go somewhere else at one time. It used to go through the spleen to the stomach, so it was the gastrosplenic. Down here, again, is our rectal gland, and servicing that will be the inferior mesenteric. And let's see if he has the iliac and all that showing. Yes, he does. You can see right here on the wall of the pelvis, the iliac artery and vein are both showing. And if you took the skin off and separated the muscle out, you'd see an artery and vein running along the pectoral fin, which will be the femoral. Okay, any questions? Take a picture. <laughs> uh, I should warn you that the glare off my forehead will stop any of this from showing. <laughs>